Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup. I'm filling in for Tom O'Brien today. He will be back tomorrow. Uh, we were just uh, streaming the Fed meeting, so no interest rate hike currently. Um, there's, they might still have one uh, before the end of the year, but the main takeaway from this is that we're going to have uh, rates be sticky uh, for quite a while. There's not a uh, foreseeable rate decrease until about uh, September of next year. And that's substantial because a lot of the conversation uh, at the beginning of this year was that we might actually see a decrease by the end of the year and that, as uh, by the end of 2023. It looks like that's not going to happen now. Um, <clears throat> inflation is, uh, has come down somewhat, um, but prices are still pretty sticky. One of the things that uh, Powell was asked right before we, we cut to this, um, you know, he was, they were talking about people on a fixed income and, and how much these higher rates hurt people. And Powell came back and said, well, inflation itself hurts people. And this is, a, this is the concept that I've been just kind of struggling with a little bit, you know, just as like a, like a citizen. So yes, like inflation hurts people on fixed income. Higher rates hurts people on fixed income. And the way that they're trying to get inflation down and, and you know, basically they have to decrease demand, right? Because there is a supply and a problem that caused all of this. And uh, it, you know, the way that you decrease demand is by um, lower wages and uh, higher unemployment. <clears throat> and so it just seems like people on this lower end uh, just get, you know, kind of messed up consistently because of this kind of stuff. And it was really just a, you know, it was kind of a sh shame. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a sad kind of look into how things kind of operate. But as it stands now for today, um, there's going to be no interest rate uh, increase. They were also speaking about uh, the housing market uh, as well. And there's an article I had been reading, uh, which is really interesting. Um, the headline on this is, is talking about how strained uh, affordability is in the housing market, and that exists, right? And you had some uh, builders who've been uh, lowering their prices, um, and they obviously take a hit to their uh, profit margin because of that. And uh, it says here that there's a fi uh, Fortune 500 home builder offering a fixed 4.25% mortgage rate in some communities to so the home builder themselves. Um, and it's, uh, it's insane. Let's see here. Um, because if mortgage rates began to spike last year, home builders across much of the country began to reduce their profit margins which had grown to record levels during the boom. Uh, for some builders, that meant offering aggressive rate buy-downs, uh, which in some cases lowered buyers' mortgage rates below 5%. In some communities, it required cutting prices by 5, 10, or even 15%. Um, however, the fact that mortgage rate shock has regained bite just as the housing market entered into the seasonality softer fall window uh, has translated into many home builders once again rolling out these incentives. Uh, Leonard, a home builder, ranked number 119 on Fortune 500, uh, is, is basically promoting a fixed mortgage rate of 5.25% in Colorado for buyers. Um, now, the caveat is they uh, signed a purchase agreement on a select move-in ready home in Colorado between September 18th and uh, the 25th. Uh, it's closing by the 31st of October on Halloween. Um, so it's interesting to see how these larger builders are trying to compete with this. Um, you know, I haven't heard of anything in um, St. Now, a lot of wealthier people have moved into St. Pete recently um, and are, are buying some of these homes. So maybe they got the fixed rate at a higher rate um, back then and they're able to just afford it, uh, afford it going forward. But I think anyone who had these kind of like variable rates, um, I, I can't imagine, uh, you know, especially if they're on a kind of like a paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I mean, you're ever getting people <coughs> who are in, you know, top wage brackets you know, making 120,000 living paycheck to paycheck. Now that might be because they've they've purchased so many things that are expensive. But uh, regardless, you have a lot of people who are not going to be able to adjust um, to any uh, increase in their payments per month. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educate investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. You know, I, I'm reading in the den right now, and uh, Jimmy D brings up, uh, you know, an interesting point. It, it, there were zero rates. There were low rates for so long. I mean, I became like an adult with rates at this, at these, you know, past levels. Um, and I don't remember really a time when I was ever, you know, conscious about finance or, or economics or anything like that, um, when, when rates weren't like extremely low. And you even had the Bank of England recently, and I, I don't have the chart pulled up. I was going to speak about it last week when I was filling in a bunch, um, but I, I don't have it up now. Anyways, Bank of England uh, said they, they might have messed up a little bit keeping rates so long because it increased money supply so much. And, uh, you know, I was comparing their M2 increase to America's M2 increase, and it was pretty, uh, it was insane that this was happening in such a small country. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, now rates are higher. Uh, but a lot of people haven't like experienced that, you know, uh, and it's, it's just a weird kind of confluence of, of kind of events that occur, um, to where now, you know, we're, we're in an environment where there are rates, which is kind of what is, I suppose supposed to be, uh, what happens, but these, this constant injection of liquidity, um, and then low rates, which, you know, was basically keeping the hose on, um, you know, that's a wake up call for a lot of people when that gets turned off. Uh, so. I remember there even being conversation, you know, years ago that raising rates um, would, would cause illiquidity, right? So it's interesting to see, but, but now with rates raised, we can, we can see that the market is still just so resilient, uh, relatively speaking. So, yeah, pretty fascinating stuff, and we'll see how we uh, can move out of this and, and hopefully adjust. Oh, let's just take a look at what's going on right now. Uh, yeah, the ES, we're kind of sideways to down. Same with the Russell, NQs, same deal. Dow up like a little bit, uh, but pretty much sideways at 0.08% right now. Um, gold contract was trading up at 1961, even with the dollar moving. Um, the dollar's at 105.21 currently. Uh, silver still staying in that 23 area. 
and then the uh, copper contract hasn't made uh, many or you know any moves significantly uh, recently. Uh, of course, the crude oil uh, that's at 89 on the contract. Tesla, some interesting stuff we'll speak about. Uh, Disney really just kind of gave up that little pump that it had. Uh, and again, this move up was on no volume uh, at all. You had this kind of <laughs> large volume just on a, on a five minute, um, kind of in this realm around here of an 8258. Uh, and we were back down there. It's going to try to get back up maybe to the 83 level. So <clears throat> they're about to dump a large amount of money um, into parks and cruises, which has a lot of people nervous. Um, 60 billion to be exact. Uh, so Disney's spending 60 billion um, on parks and cruises to stay ahead of the growing competition. Uh, the median entertainment giant on Tuesday unveiled a 10 year outlay for the business that has carried it through streaming losses uh, at a gathering of Wall Street analysts, investors at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. Uh, the plan caught some shareholders by surprise sparking a 3.7% fall in the stock that has already underperformed the wider market and that of rivals such as Netflix. Uh, shares are up 0.6% on Wednesday. You might have had this bump up. Um, <clears throat> this is obviously on a daily. Uh, we can go to like a monthly or whatever. Um, you had this kind of run up a little bit on some news uh, that they were, had $1 uh, subscriptions for their streams, but you know, I don't know. And this is really the question going forward with a lot of these companies. like. Do, are we just are we just doing cable again? And what I mean by that is you have so many different uh, streaming services, right? And there is even like a like a joke conversation um, about packaging these all together. And it's just the same thing as as, as cable almost. Uh, you, you know, it's a question: is like, does it make sense to really have <clears throat> this massive apparatus uh, just to stream content, or does it make more sense to like digitally license it out? Um, and uh, maybe that conversation will become, you know, will reignite as time goes on. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll stand to see because Disney's been having some issues uh, with its streaming. And there's so much cost that goes in uh, to managing uh, that infrastructure. So, yeah, just reading some more of this article. I don't know. I'm nervous with this stock, too. Um, I I don't see any, I, I think there's also a lot of conversation uh, that not a lot of people see why it would get back to any, you know, price that's substantial. I mean, this is well below the cost basis for a lot of people, right? I mean, you had folks buying in like average, you know, like 95 to 100. And um, luckily, it's still above these uh, pandemic lows, I believe. When it crashed, let me take a, just a little, well, why don't we do the 15 year? Do the five year. No, that's not even. Why is that only going back? Here, let me take a look. Yeah, so down here, yeah, 79. So, I mean, we're, we're this is, I know a lot of people got in in this level too, and it crashed um, when all the COVID announcements were coming out in 2020. Um, but I mean, we're, we're, we're right there basically, right? I mean, that's 7907. We're trading at 8271. So quite a, a journey around the world uh, and Disney has, has taken these past few years. Um, Apple down a little bit. Had a jump down, let's get off that five year. Go to the daily, uh, some significant blowdown. There were some headlines saying that the demand for iPhone 15 was higher than the supply, which I think was supposed to be a way to, uh, I don't know, get people positive about the stock after some of the news that came out, but uh, it, it didn't work. So we had some massive volume down here. And some larger volume too, all the way down today. Look at this on the monthly. I mean, coming from 192 down now. So it'll be interesting to see if we can get out of this pit. And again, this is not substantial volume on the downside, but um, you know, still enough that it'll have to get some energy moving back up. Steel Dynamics, um, at 100 currently, it's sad to see this kind of break, that consolidation, um, whereas trading in this line, I speak about this all the time, uh, but again, you had this break of consolidation on pretty substantial volume, movement down, and uh, I want to wait to see what this, th this is obviously like kind of an emerging profile for it, uh, especially like right at $100. So I think we, if, if this can't get energy to get back up, say like to 102 or anything to get back into this game, um, I think we're going to stick around this level and we'll see a new uh, consolidation pattern going forward with steel. There's nothing too like, you know, um, 
attractive going on, I suppose, in the steel market to, to warrant this really pumping up uh, any more than it is currently. So they, uh, during the Fed meeting as well, there was some conversation about uh, the strikes. The GM, one of the GM factories has completely um, stopped producing anything uh, because uh, they, they add a protective coating on a lot of their products. Um, and that's one of the areas that's striking. Um, so, you know, this is all about people needing to have more to live. Um, of course, the price is so high. And we were just speaking earlier about how this kind of is a... Uh, like a feedback loop almost. Um, but in news around increasing wages, you have Bank of America is actually gonna try to raise their minimum wage to 23 bucks an hour in October, which is a great uh, price for a lot of people. Uh, Bank of America will boost its minimum hour hourly wage to $23 in October as it heads towards a goal of raising hourly pay to $25 by 2025. Uh, the pay bump translates to a minim minimum salary of almost 48,000 a year for full-time employees. Bank of America has increased pay several times in recent years, starting with move to 15 an hour in 2017. So that's some positive news on that front, I suppose, if you look at it that way. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, everyone. We're taking a look at General Mills right now. Um, they, they beat first quarter estimates, okay? 
but this was, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <God>. <clears throat> Their agents are choking me. Um, they, they beat this because of higher product prices, okay? So this is not a uh, change or dominance in their market share or anything like that. Um, it's, it's just because they're increasing prices. Um, and in fact, they've actually, they've, they've lost some retail market share, their CEO had said, which is not a great outlook for the company. Um, it did have superior on-shelf availability, the CEO said uh, earlier this year. Um, so, you know, they're beating estimates just because of higher prices, because they're necessarily selling anymore. Um, now, they raised those prices because demand was slowing. So even though it looks good on the front, you hear like, okay, they beat, they beat profit estimates. Um, it's still not a great outlook um, for the company. Um, organic sales in North America retail segments grew 4% as it saw a modest rebuild of retailer inventory uh, in the quarter after being hit by weaker demand. And what's interesting too is I've seen, um, there's like, there's two companies in particular that I have in my mind. I think it's called Magic Spoons and uh, Kodiak, I believe. I don't think they're owned by General Mills. I think these are um, smaller companies that are um, coming in and they're, they're heavy hitters. And I, I see um, them gaining a lot of shelf space uh, in the uh, Publixes around my area. <clears throat> and I think that's the same in larger cities as well. When I was in uh, New York, I had seen some of the Magic Spoons out there as well. Um, so they are losing um, shelf space. Uh, General Mills reported net sales of uh, 4.91 billion compared to the expectations of 4.88 billion, um, according to the data released. And I think on their, this year they got pretty smacked as well, up from 90, and coming down on some substantial volume. And it's been a little journey uh, to the bottom uh, since then for them. Let me see here, is this, I wanna talk about Canopy for a moment. But give me a second to get it up and get through the paywall. The Fed is talking, uh, the Fed, the federal government is talking about rescheduling cannabis, which would be pretty substantial for a lot of these um, growers, uh, substantial for a lot of the farmers, or excuse me, the, um, uh, the sellers as well. But uh, Canopy uh, jumped down below $1 uh, after 46 million shares registered for the sale. I, I never liked these cannabis companies, and I don't even personally think with the rescheduling um, of, of this substance uh, to something that's not Schedule 1, uh, that these companies will see anything substantial in the long term. Now, you're definitely going to get a bump, right? Like, if that news comes out or the, the conversation becomes more serious, um, you're absolutely going to see, a, uh, in my opinion, a short-term increase in a lot of these pot stocks. But I still think they have some substantial problems with it. Um, and I also think for a lot of places where it's legal, it's just so expensive. It, it's taxed beyond belief. Um, and, I, and I think it gets to a point where uh, people start finding it elsewhere. So that's just some quick news on Canopy Growth. Um, but yeah, we're below $1 uh, with that company again, um, which is never a, uh, a good thing. Instacart, well here, let's first take a look at Arm. They had their IPO last week. And I think they are still down today, 4.86%. Again, one of the larger targets uh, that Maybe we get it down to uh, three days. <clears throat> One of the larger targets that people are talking about is the 48 uh, level. So again, not enough time to really determine any significant volume. Of course, we can just talk about what volume it has been trading on. Um, but you know, relatively speaking, this this downturn is uh, is, is decent volume for it. Um, and again, we're at negative five. I mean, you can see that hop right there. We're down five percent today in there. Uh, Instacart also had some issues. Uh, they had their IPO. Let's pull it up. Spelling that right. See what? Okay, yeah, Maple Bear. Perfect. They're down, <laughs> yeah, 10.8%. 10 10 um, and I mean, that was just a stark decrease. I didn't even really run up that much. Um, so yeah, that's something more than 5%. The second day of trading Wednesday, continuing the slide that began immediately after the stock hit the NASDAQ on Tuesday. Uh, Instacart sold shares in its long-awaited IPO on Monday. That was 30 bucks a piece. Um, trading under the ticker symbol, symbol CART, uh, the stock popped 40%, opened at 42, uh, but then sold off. So we were right there at that level again at the, uh, 
intended offering at $30. Um, now, by Wednesday afternoon, this article is saying Instacart rally had fizzled further, and uh, obviously we were at 30 at the time of this article. It was at 32. And everyone was talking about with ARM and Instacart and all these that the, the, the IPO slump uh, was going to be over. And these guys are going to save that, and it doesn't seem like that's happening at all. And I haven't you know, given it enough thought to really formulate an opinion of like, why this is going on and why these companies aren't necessarily taking off. I mean, ARM was attractive, and we saw the AI hype going on, um, but maybe some of the institutional investors are getting wise to it being, um, you know, maybe a little bit overpriced. Same with NVIDIA. Uh, we're down 2.4% uh, today, 424. I don't want to be on the three-day for this. But I'd like to, the time frame, I'd like to go to year-to-date. And so we've backed down quite a bit from that 502 level. Um, so we have like trading in this bounds from the, you know, it jumped up on a significant volume, uh, just below 400. And for the past few months, um, you know, we've been trading to this. Uh, there are some people who are getting a little bit dicey on NVIDIA as well, um, but I don't, I don't see that necessarily happening to them. I, I don't think they'll like breach 400 anytime soon, but 500 is definitely a pie in the sky uh, for that company. Um, I think the AI hype will die down a little bit uh, as well as time is going on. Give me a second. I'm reading some messages. All right. Speaking of the AI, and this is much, this isn't necessarily market news, but I can tie it in. Something interesting happened a few months ago. We're going to talk about AI a little bit. Something interesting happened a few months ago uh, where this pic picture started circulating on uh, the app formerly known as Twitter uh, of a bomb that had gone off at the Pentagon, right? And it seemed like, a, you know, obviously if you looked a little bit, if you looked closely at it, it didn't look legit. There was some issues with the pixels and there was a lot of bleeding. And I was like, okay, it's AI. Someone's just trying to joke around. Well, it did actually have like uh, real world effects, right? And it impacted the market for a time being until companies were coming out and saying, or excuse me, news agencies were coming out and saying, oh, it's fake, but the problem is, is those news agencies took it and ran. Um, now, it didn't get as much attention because I think they caught it pretty quickly, but it shows that there is a threat of this misinformation with AI that can have drastic effects on the market. And what the Senate Intelligence Committee has just released is they are concerned about um, election deep fakes, right? So deep fakes, uh, which is, you know, it's an AI generated video. Um, usually it's gonna be of someone of some kind of renown, uh, a celebrity or a politician in this case. And most likely they'll probably be doing something in this deep fake um, that, that isn't good and that um, a lot of the uh, constituents won't like. And we'll talk about this a little bit more when we get back. Um, not too long, but just stay tuned. We'll be right there. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we got a short segment here, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the markets. Um, you know, we have the futures down 0.7 here. We have the Russell futures down uh, 0.85 and Q down uh, just 1%, actually, and increasing, 1.2. The YM down 0.10%. I'm talking a little bit about the Senate uh, Intelligence Committee warning about deep fakes going forward. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I, I do see a world where AI actually um, makes politics a, a little bit more localized, if that makes sense. Um, just because you can only trust what you can verify in, uh, in person, I think. And uh, there will be a time where something like this, like AI, uh, is going to be used to cause a large disruption going forward. And uh, that's, that's when we'll start rethinking, um, you know, just, just how much we rely on kind of uh, things beyond our immediate vicinity. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, however, AI, we're still beating it a little bit. Some of the science news for the end of the segment. Uh, the best humans still outperform artificial intelligence in a creative, divergent thinking task. Now, what this means is that most humans don't outperform artificial intelligence, um, uh, but still, uh, we, we're, we're still uh, passing the tape before AI. Uh, they were asking them about business concepts in here, um, needed creative business concepts. A lot of humans um, just kind of got stuck on a, a few concepts and they couldn't get out of it, but AI is able to spread out uh, quite a bit and suggest a lot of different things, and they can see connections that maybe the average human cannot see, um, but our best still uh, beat them. So pretty fascinating stuff on the news segment. Uh, we were talking yesterday about Novo Nordisk and how they had um, an FDA Form 483 uh, hit on them at the Smalgatude plant. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we get uh, into that segment. Um, however, uh, this took their stock down uh, substantially, not substantially, a decent amount. Let me see if we can pull it up. Huh. I'll look up the ticker and we'll look it on the break. Folks, thank you so much uh, for coming with me on this short uh, show that we had today. Tom will be back tomorrow. He was just uh, traveling a little bit, and uh, you're going to get some more of that great TFNN goodness tomorrow. We have Tommy O'Brien at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Have a great rest of your day.